Shalom, shalom, family, shalom, shalom. Welcome back, welcome back. I hope everyone enjoyed their Shabbat yesterday. I hope everyone enjoyed their Shabbat yesterday. Um, I hope everyone's doing well out there today. Um, thank you for everyone that'll be tuning in, doing the video, and later on after this broadcast. But as you all can tell by the title today, we'll be getting into a question. And that question is, are Bantus and West Africans related? Is there a connection between the two people? Because I'm sure everyone's encountered, you know, a West African per se or a Bantu per se and heard them say things like, you know, um, Yorubas aren't Bantu, so they're not Israelites. Um, Ebos are Canaanites, um, things like that. You've heard these things or these shots being thrown from both sides, from the West African side and the Bantu side, both disqualifying each other from being related. And I'm just here to bring a few sources out just to show that indeed they are related and there is a connection between um, the people we know today as West Africans as well as Bantus. So the link is in the chat, like I said on the video, or like I said on the, the post I shared earlier, this is an open mic. So the link is in the chat, all right? This is an open mic, so this is, um, the link is in the chat for anyone who wants to come up and add their thoughts um, to the conversation. As well as you all in the chat, do you all believe that West Africans and Bantus are related? If you do, um, you know, put your um, answer in the um, chat. And as well, I have something else to bring out before we, can, before we even get started. Um, I am doing a book giveaway. Um, to the to the subscribers to the followers for you all you know just sticking by me and maintaining a solid following for my channel always supporting always coming through and things of that sort so i appreciate that and to show my appreciation i will be doing a book giveaway um as i said on the post earlier um if you want to enter the book drawing all you have to do is share my channel or share one of my videos to your social media screenshot it and just send me an email at son of ya4 at gmail.com all right and i will put that in the chat for everyone or for you all who do not have my email or who would not remember it again it's son of ya4 at gmail.com all you have to do is um share my video or share my channel to your social media screenshot it um email it to me and i will enter your name into the drawing um other news before we get started i do have part one of the documentary completed well not all the way completed but it is done i just have to go back over it do a few touch-ups and make sure it's fully completed and it will be released next shabbat so please look forward please stay tuned for part one of the documentary um as promised i will be releasing that next week next shabbat so again, it leaks in the chat for anyone who wants to come up. And again, shalom, shalom to everyone that's tuning in right now. I'm going to go ahead and get started with answering this question. Are Bantus and West Africans related? All right, so give me one second while I pull up the presentation or the PowerPoint. And we can get straight into it. Let's see, let's see. Well, first, let me do this. Because, again, there's a lot of conversation. And even in my comments, I have a lot of comments. Um, I might not respond to every single comment, but I do see them. And a lot of the time, or in a lot of comments, um, you have different tribes going back and forth at one another, disclaiming um, relations to one another. When, in fact, you all, you all are related. But let's get into this. And that's actually the beauty of DNA, of Wahaplo groups, of paternal ancestry. You know, it, it links you to people who you say you aren't related to. <clears throat> so to get started, we'll be starting off in this quick source right here. Um, beyond Eurasia, technology in Africa, the Americas, and Oceania in pre-modern times. So let me make sure I make this full screen so we can see this nice and clear. All right, so let me jump back. So we're going to start reading from the highlighted section. And it reads off, 
the future cultural patterns of Africa south of the Sahara, exclusive of the Sudanic belt, were determined by Iron Age technology. The origin of the Bantu or Niger Congo is identified with the Nok site in north central Nigeria, where the iron working and terracotta working had began taking place as early as 500 BC. The Bantus, whose origins are in central Nigeria and nearby Cameroon, were the first group to make use of iron products and thereby secure their later expansion due to superior technology throughout central, eastern, and southern Africa. Now, my point in bringing this beginning source out is to just show that it is believed that the Bantu's origins actually lie in Nigeria, um, the same places we have other tribes like your Igbos, um, your Yoruba, even your Igala, specifically at this note culture site. Now, the Yoruba, the Igbos, and other tribes in Nigeria also have connections to this note cultural site as well. And of course, I do not believe um, the Bantus originate in Nigeria. Um, I believe um, uh, I believe, with their migrations coming in from North Africa or the Near East, they stopped first in Nigeria before expanding out throughout the west of um, Africa. But continuing on to the next source, characterizing the ad mix African ancestry of African Americans. And it's, this right here just gets straight to the point. This um, source right here just gets straight to the point. And shalom, shalom, family, um, to you in the chat. Shalom, shalom. And starting at the highlight, it says specifically that the Bantu appear to have closest ancestry to the Yoruba. So again, my Bantu brothers and sisters out there, um, who comment on the channel and say things like Ban or say things like Yoruba are Canaanites, Yoruba are Hamites. If you all have the closest ancestry to the Yoruba, what does that make you all? If you claim that these people are descendants of Ham. So again, the Bantu appear to have closest ancestry related to the Yoruba. This is consistent with the Nigerian origins of the Yoruba and the presumed origins of the Bantu from the southwestern uh, modern boundaries of Nigeria and Cameroon, and these subsequent migrations of the Bantu east and south. All right, so again, the Bantu actually share ancestry with the Yoruba. It's pretty close as it actually outlines in this paper. But let's continue to build upon that. And to do that, we're going to be going to reconstructing prehistoric African population structure. And we'll be starting with the highlighted section. All right, starting with the green highlighted section, it says, however, this lineage appears to have contributed little ancestry to present day Bantu speakers in Eastern Africa. And it's talking about the, um, the lineage or ancestry um, dealing with what's going on above the highlighted. So I just skipped that part, but it goes on to say, who instead trace their ancestry to a lineage related to present day West Africans. So Bantus actually trace their lineage to present day West Africans with an additional component related to Neolithic speaking Dinka and the Tanzania Luxmanda 3000 wonder years before present, all right? So not only do Bantus actually share ancestry with quote unquote West Africans, and we know, or what we will come to see, those West Africans are those carrying that E1B1A marker, as well as Bantus that carry ancestry related to Dinka populations who are actually, you know, authentic descendants of Ham with those A and B markers, as well as the Tanzanian sample as outlined right here. This was um, like a B sample as well. And shalom, shalom, brother. Thank you for tuning in. Shalom, shalom. All right, and continuing to build upon that, um, we're looking at graph D or picture D right here, where it says ancestry related to West African Mendy. We see high frequencies of this in West Africa, like Senegal, um, West Africa, Nigeria right here, Central Africa, where Bantus are, and even down here in the eastern or southeastern Cape Coast of South Africa, and even over here in East Africa, we have Mandy, West African-related ancestry. And that's the green 
or Section C highlighted right here, it says that the Mendy from Sierra Leone, which was which um excuse me, the Mendy from Sierra Leone, which is related deeply to the West African ancestry that was spread with the Bantu expansion of agriculturalists. So again, what this is highlighting right here is that actually during the Bantu expansion, you all carried deep-rooted ancestry that's related to the Mandy speaking peoples of Sierra Leone or um, of old Ghana Empire, Mali, things like that. Peace and blessings, peace and blessings, family. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, I'm checking out the chat one second. The brother says, um, Shalom, I am a West African Eve. Shalom, brother, from Ghana. And my people's or tradition says that some of our people migrated into East and Southern Africa as we separated from North East to West Africa. Hmm, brother, that's very, very interesting. I was not aware of that part of you all's or traditions. And, it go, and he even goes on to say, and in my personal dealings with some Bantu people, it is overwhelming evident that we are the same people on many levels, historically, culturally, and linguistically. And my brother, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And if you have some information that you mind sharing with me on that migration of those airways into East and South Africa, please email me at sonofya4 at gmail.com. That is some powerful information. And of course, the Eves, I do believe, would be Israelites as well. Um, but back to the presentation. It goes on to say, we're looking specifically at chart D right here. It's showing us an admixture graph solution where Mandy from Sierra Leone and the Yoruba from Nigeria have ancestry from a basal West African lineage. The other source of West African ancestry is most closely related to Eastern Africans as well as non-Africans, which could be consistent with an expansion from Eastern Africa. All right. So again, this is putting West African populations, specifically the Mandi and the Yoruba, who we know are E1B1A, is making them related to Eastern African populations. We know we have people in, um, well, we know we have specifically Bantus in Eastern Africa, um, who have E1B1A, like the like the Luya, and other Bantu groups, and we also have other groups in West or Eastern Africa who West Africans and even Bantus who would be related to, like the um, EP2 groups and even the E1B1B groups. That's dealing with um, DNA. Okay, okay. Checking out the chat one more time. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sis. Okay, I'm sorry for um. I'm calling you a brother, but thank you, thank you. I will be looking forward to you reaching out. Continuing on, um, it mentions off right here that this specific sample that dates back to 600 um, BP or years before present, the Tanzanian Pemba, as well as the Mali or the Malawa or the Malawi Chiwa tribe, as well as the Ngoni tribe, the Tumbuka tribe, the Yao tribe, the Yoruba tribe, the Isan tribe, the Gambian tribe, the Luya, the Bantu of Kenya, the Bantu South Africa of Vumbo, the Himba, the Vambo, and the Bantu South African hero are all fitted as consistent with having 100% Mendi related West African ancestry. So even all these Bantu tribes in South Africa, the Chiwa, the Nguni, the Tumbunko, the Yao, the Amovumbu, the Hiro, they all have West African ancestry or quote unquote Mendy related ancestry. And even before we move on, um, the sister was talking about the Eve. It's also interesting that, you know, the Eve and the Yoruba have a lot of um, history in common as well. And I plan on touching on that later or in the future. And even this goes on to say that the Madinka from West or from West from the Western African coast are fitted as having 2.8%, 2.6% Levant Neolithic related ancestry. All right. Again, that's just showing that they do have or that um this specific, these specific people do have deep-rooted ancestry in the Levant, um, as told from their oral traditions. So again, these Bantu tribes in eastern, eastern Africa and in South Africa. 
um, are related to tribes in West Africa, like the Mandi, the Yoruba, the Isan, and even people in Gambia. Continuing on, it says that the Luya and Eastern African Bantu groups or Bantu speaking groups are fitted as having 40% to 6% Dinka related ancestry. And we know that would be those A and B groups or those groups that we would call Hamites with the remaining being Western African Mendy related ancestry, all right? And what's important about the Luya is their DNA or their specific haplotype was used to trace the quote unquote sub-Saharan African ancestry in the Jewish groups. And we see that they are related to West African Mendy. And even a third highlighted right here, it says that the Kikuyu are fitted as having 63 to um, 2% who also have West African related ancestry that goes back to the Mendy. So again, Bantu speaking populations actually do have ancestry related to these West African tribes. So again, if West Africans are Hamites or Canaanites, then what are the so-called Bantus, if that's what you all believe? Looking at the chat again, one second, the brother asked, does this mean the Bantu people are descendants of the Igbo and Yoruba? I wouldn't necessarily say descendant. They could be descended from the same uh, parental group or parental stock, um, but they wouldn't. I don't. I wouldn't say that they are um, descended from these peoples. And I believe I'll get into that a little more when I get into the specific clades. And to do that, we're going to look at the Y chromosome variation in Sub-Saharan Africa insights into the pre into the um, his history of Niger Congo groups. And even if I was to look at the traditions of, and cultures of certain Bantu tribes with West Africans, they all practice similar traditions. Um, I don't even want to get into it right now because I'm saving it for the documentary, but they do have similar traditions and customs and even similar migration routes and or traditions. So there's even a lot more in common that's not related to genetics. So we're going to start at the highlighted section where it says the expansion of the Bantu languages, a family within the Niger Congo phylum 5,000 years ago, represents a major event in the past demographic, or, or yes, demographic of the continent. Many previous studies on the Y chromosome variation in Africa associated the Bantu expansion with the haplogroup E1B1A and sometimes its sub lineage E1B1A7. Now, why is that important? Because not only do quote unquote Bantus have this specific lineage, E1B1A7, the Yoruba also have E1B1A7. The Igbo also have E1B1A7. But let's continue. It goes on to say, however, the distribution of these two lineages extend far beyond the area occupied nowadays by Bantu speaking people raising questions on the actual genetic structure behind this expansion. Within the Niger Congo phylum, we are certain, yes, we assert for the, cert, or the, for the first time differences in haplogroup composition between Bantu and non-Bantu groups via two markers, U174 and U175 on the background of haplogroup E1B1A and E1B1A7. So this is what connects the Bantu groups and the non-Bantu groups on a genetic level. The two parental markers are the two um, sub lineages of E1B1A7, U174 and U175. This is what connects the Bantu populations and the non-Bantu populations. Continuing on, this is the most significant and well-known migration event in Sub-Saharan Africa that has been associated, although not um, unanimously with agriculture innovations and at later stage with iron technologies is the expansion of the Bantu language family belonging to the Niger Congo fi uh, phylum. These languages are assumed to have originated in the grass field regions between Cameroon and Nigeria no more than 5,000 years ago and spread from the homeland throughout sub-Saharan Africa to Somalia in the east and far as the Cape in the south. All right, and before we move on, I noticed uh, the highlighted part that I have highlighted in the green. It says that it is believed that the Bantu um, 
where it was in the Nigeria area around 5,000 years ago, the Nigeria Cameroon area around 5,000 years ago. But um, according to genetic data um, from Cameroon and Nigeria, I believe it's a paper that go that's going into Sri Lanka and Cameroon, and it brings out the genetic findings from around that time period. And it says that the people or the genetics that they found in that area is not related to Bantu speaking populations. And I can actually bring that out later if need be. Um, but again, continuing. So let's see where we're going to start from right here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's start right here where it says or several genetic studies which focus mainly on the uniparental transmitted mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome are in favor of the first hypothesis, namely that of the Bantu expansion was a joint linguistic and demographic event. As regards to mtDNA, several haplogroups such as L0A, L2A, L3B, and L3E have been associated with the Bantu expansions. While for the Y chromosome haplogroups E1B1A defined SMP M2 as well as haplogroup B2B have been connected to this event. And it's also possible and it's um excuse me, it's also possible that this haplogroup B2B group became am amalgamated with the Bantu peoples or with the E1B1A markers when they came to my, um, West Africa and started to expand into East and South Africa. Because again, we know that haplogroup B is native to West Africa specifically. This specific lineage is native to West Africa and we don't have any ancient remains of E1B1A in Sub-Saharan Africa or West Africa. But again, it says, however, no differences between, no differences have been detected in frequency and diversity levels of haplogroup E1B1A between Bantu and other Niger Congo populations. Let me read that one more time. However, no differences have been detected in frequencies and diversity levels of haplogroup E1B1A between Bantu and other Niger Congo populations. In fact, not only does this geographic distribution of E1B1A extend far beyond the area settled by speakers of Bantu languages, but its frequency and the association, or excuse me, and the associated SRT derived or diversity are even higher in non-Bantu speaking regions such as Guinea, such as Guinea-Bissau. All right, so again, <clears throat> This is just letting us know right here that E1B1A extends beyond the people known as the Bantus and is even higher in other regions like Guinea-Bissau. All right, so going to the next highlighted part. It says, overall, the haplogroup composition in all the groups ref reflects what has been previously observed in the African continent with haplogroup A mainly presenting or present in Khoisan speakers and East African groups, haplogroup B mainly found in hunter-gatherer, pygmies, and also Khoisans, as well as their neighbors, and also haplogroup E in almost all groups, representing the majority, 87% of the haplogroups. Haplogroup E1B1A, including its sub-lineages, is present in all groups, excluding the Namibian Khoisan, it was found at a frequency of 68.5% in the entire database. In the entire database. With respect to the sub-lineages of E1B1A type here, the most frequent haplogroup in the combined data set was E1B1A8, which comprised 35%, which was found in all groups itself in Namibia and Khoisan. All Bantu-speaking groups showed relatively high frequencies of this haplogroup. All right, all Bantu-speaking groups show relatively high frequencies of this haplogroup, ranging from 18 to 62 percent. Now, what's interesting about that, when we go into West Africa, those non-speaking Bantu groups, they have what you can say E1B1A at even higher frequencies at about 70 to 100 percent. All right, so that's just something to throw out there. It goes on to say, with the exception of the South African Bantu with the frequency that was only 
The second most common haplogroup, E1B1A7A, is present in African populations with an average frequency of 23% and shows moderately high frequencies in all Bantu and Pygmy groups. The highest frequencies are found in Nigeria, 67%, and Bantu speakers from Cameroon, 46%, which are both regions that are close to the punitive homeland of the Bantu languages. So if we was to go into Nigeria, look at the Yoruba, they have this haplotype E1B1A7 at 97 or 93%. I believe it's actually 97. Um, and if you was to go into places like Cameroon and go to the Bamalike, they have E1B1A7 at 100%. All right. So again, just showing the commonality between non-Bantu populations and Bantu populations on a genetic level. Another common haplogroup with, um, within haplogroup E is E1B1A excluding E1B18 and E1B17, with an average frequency of 8.9%, which is characterized of all West African groups included here with the highest frequencies in the Mandi-speaking peoples from Senegal, around 75%, and Burkina Faso, around 53%. And getting ready, getting ready to wrap up this specific source, it says that indeed haplogroup E1B1A and its derived or derivative E1B1A8 are characterized of the Mandi, which belong to the earliest split of the linguistic tree. The derived haplogroup E1B1A7 is characterized of Gur speaking or Gur speakers. In the most, in the most derived haplogroup analyzed here, E1B1A7A is characterized of Bantu speaking groups who represent one of the most derived branches of the Niger Congo linguistic tree. All right, so again, this specific capital type is leaking Bantu populations with people like the Mandi, with people like the Gur, the Yoruba, Isan, different West African tribes, people that um, you would not consider Bantu. Continuing, it says, while previous genetic studies on Y chromosome variations have linked haplogroup E1B1A and its sub-lineage E1B1A7 when genotyped specifically to the Bantu expansion, our results demonstrate that this association extends to all of the Niger Congo groups, not just the Bantu. All right, reading this again. While previous genetic studies on Y chromosome variation have linked haplogroup E1B1A and its sub lineage E1B1A7 when genotyped specifically to the Bantu expansion, our genetic results demonstrate that this association extends to all of Niger Congo, not just to Bantus, all right? So that means that Bantus are related to other people in the Niger Congo, uh, in the Niger Congo group family, all right? Indeed, E1B1A does not differ in frequencies between Niger Congo, non-Bantus, and Bantus. And this is also true if E1B1A7 is taken into account. This, um, this distinct position is mainly derived by, e, by haplogroup E1B1A, um, which has high frequencies in Mandy speakers and exhibits and clinical reduction from Western towards Eastern and Southern Africa. On the other hand, only girl speaking groups are characterized by the presence of haplogroup E1B1A7, which was previously associated with the Bantu expansion with a probable origin in Western Central Africa. So even the girl speaking people who are in the Senegal area who are in um, the Mali area, they have the same haplogroup that is associated with the so-called Bantu expansion, the same exact lineage, E1B1A7. Continuing on to the next highlighted, it says, instead a new sub lineage, E1B1A7, namely E1B1A7A, which may also have originated in Western Central Africa, is associated with the Bantu expansion. Indeed, we found that this marker has its highest frequencies in Nigerian Yoruba as well as Cameroonian Bantu speakers. All right, so you have non-Bantu speakers who have the same, you know, paternal ancestry as Bantu speakers. And here's a good chart or a great chart that shows the distribution of this haplotype E1B1A that would connect these Bantu speaking groups throughout West, Central, and South Africa, and also East Africa to these non-speaking Bantu populations 
in West Africa. All right. So now we're going to look at two linguistic connections and we're going to wrap it up. And again, um, this is an open mic. So if anybody would like to come up, add their two cents or have anything to say, feel free. But if not, I will wrap it up once I get done with these two last sources. So one second while I move back to the page. OK, so we're going to be reading from Cape of Good Hope, um, Colonial Secretary's Minister Division, the origin of the Bantu. All right. So starting at the highlighted section, it says on the western coast of Central Africa, there are tribes which were probably originally pure Bantu but which now speak a Negro dialect. And the converse case has been found too. In the Fudi or the Fulani and in Hausa, we have two languages made up of all kinds of elements, such as the Bantu, Hermetic, Negro, Berber, and Arabian. So even in West Africa, you have Bantu linguistic connections amongst certain tribes like the Fulubi or the Fulani and also the Hausa. Um, it goes on to say, Yet there can be no doubt, but that originally both the Fude and the Hausa tribes are of true Bantu origin. We know both these tribes have frequencies of E1B1A as well. Um, it goes on to say, though in ancient times they may have borne another name, and though a large percentage of their blood now flowing through their veins is of non-Bantu origin, um, which is true as well. So again, there is a Bantu or there is a Bantu linguistic connection to West African tribes like the Fulubi or the Fulani and also the Hausa. Now going to the Palestinian origins of the Fix, it also makes a connection to Bantu tribes in Central Africa or the Congo as well. So let's read. And to do that, we shall start from, <clears throat> let's see where we shall start from. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's start right here where it says, but before entering Nigeria at the Chad, some of them had gone further west and later south into the present Nigeria, or excuse me, to the present area of Ghana. Others went south from the Chad borders into the present Western Cameroons, where there's Bantu groups, while third groups still went south through the Banu into the Congo regions. Now, why is that important? Because down here, it gets very interesting when he lets us know about those tribes that went into the Congo regions. It says he goes further in confirming of the above splits by saying, they seem to have been many, but suffered constant splits in their ranks. One group headed south into the present Nigeria. Another group must have moved southeast toward the lower Congo and Western Cameroon, as evidenced by the linguistic links between the Efiks and some Congolese because the Congo, or excuse me, because in the Congo, there are effete names also like Edim, Utu, um, Mbo Utu, also known in Congo as Mbuntu. And in the Western Cameroon, Efik tongue is spoken. So in Western Cameroon, the Efik tongue is spoken. And also amongst the Bantu tribes in Congo, there are linguistic co um, connections with names such as Edim, Utu, um, Mbo Utu, which is in Congo known as Mbuntu or Mbutu. All right. So again, um, I think I did a pretty good job at showing that Bantu groups are indeed related to West African groups um, by way of genetics, as well as a few linguistic connections. So I guess as of now, if there's any questions in the chat, please feel free to um, ask them. Again, I do have the documentary done or part one of the documentary, and that will be coming out next Shabbat, next Saturday. Um, again, I am doing a book giveaway as well. Um, instructions for that, all you have to do is share a video, share my channel to your social media, screenshot it, email me at will son of Yah, or excuse me, at son of Yah 4 at gmail.com, and I will put you in the panel or the drawing. All right. So I'll stick around for about one, two more minutes, see if anyone's going to join. I'll throw the link in the chat, see if anyone's going to join to ask any questions. If not, again, I will wrap this up, and I will see you all next Shabbat. 
again, this was just a quick video to show the connection between West African band, or excuse me, between West Africans and Bantu groups. All right. So on a genetic level, you both share paternal ancestors. Um, so with you all calling each other Hamites or Canaanites and, both and things like that, you know, that would mean the things for um, the both of you all. Um, the brother asked, how do I get into the drawing? Again, just um, share my channel on one of your social media platforms. Um, just um, share the channel, um, share a video, screenshot it, and email it to me at sonofyah4.com, and I will put your name in a drawing. And next Shabbat, I will be going live. Um, I will be going live before the video or before I release um, the documentary and um, showing who won a, or showing who won the book drawing. So the results or the winner for the book drawing will be coming next Shabbat before um, part one of the documentary comes out. All right, all right. So again, I'm gonna stick around for about one more minute see if anyone has any specific questions concerns comments if not thank you all for tuning in and i will catch you all next shabbat all right again i'm gonna stick around for about one more minute see if any more questions or anything comes into the chat the name of the book um i have a few books that i'm gonna give away but the book that i'm gonna give away this shabbat um let's see where is it at um, the name of this specific book is African Cosmology of the Bantu Kakongo um, Principles of Life and Living. That's the name of the book I will be giving away this Shabbat um, for those who enter the drawing. And um, I will be giving out um, a few more books over the next few months as well. So if you don't win or if you don't win this Shabbat, you will have a chance to win another time. And of course, if you all need certain PDF books <laughs> or anything, um, I can get that to you at any time. So you can just email me if you need a certain book ASAP. I can see if I can get it for you on the PDF version. All right, all right. So I see no questions. I see um, no concerns or anything. So again, thank you for tuning in. I will wrap it up. Um, I'll play the intro or the outro, and if there's any questions or anything that pop up during that time, I will answer them. All right, all right. The brother Ahaya B. Praise states that West Africans claiming they are not related to Bantus, it's like the Yoruba, <laughs> claiming they are not related to the Evo. Facts, facts, my brother, that's facts, that's facts. On a genetic level, on a cultural level, even on a linguistic level, to some extent, there's connections right there's connections there's definitely connections all right so to adopt for tuning in family and shalom enjoy the rest of you all's day again if any questions anything come up on the outro i will answer them if not see you next shabbat <laughs>